So when I left Steamboat Lake, the first place I headed to was Walden, Colorado. And um, I think even a guy who worked at Steamboat Lake, one of the uh, maintenance rangers, um, said to me, what are you going there for? <laughs> and they had me wondering whether or not, you know, I was crazy to be going to Walden, Colorado. Well, I'm going to cut away for a second and let you see the campground that I stayed at. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to tell you just what exactly is in Walden, Colorado. I want to introduce you to uh, Granite Corner RV Park. And uh, this is in Walden, Colorado. What you see is what there is. This is uh, three sites right here and a fourth one over beyond that shed. Nice wide open sites. It's a nice corner location off of... 14 at about a four block walk if I walk over here from town you can see at the end of the street there's a uh, Conoco sign you can't see it but to the right of it there's a shell sign those are the two gas stations in town and that's Main Street and if you were to walk up to Main Street and go right uh, for about the next five minutes of walking you'd find a couple of restaurants that are pretty good and You'd find a cafe and a few other things that are pretty interesting. This is a pretty cool area, and I'm going to highlight some things by photo and, and by description. Uh, but I wanted you to see the park. It's owned by a fella named Kent, and uh, he works for the county. And uh, this is a county that's about 600 square miles and has all of about 1,300 people. I'll say it again. It's about 600 square miles. And there's about 1,300 people. Walden is the metropolis of the county. It's at the northern end. And it's got about 450 people. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to go back to a description with me in front of the county. All right, so Walden, Colorado. First of all, it's located just east of the Continental Divide. To the west of Walden, uh, along the Continental Divide, are the Zirkles. There are other mountain ranges, other wilderness areas that virtually surround the community. You're at about 8,100 feet. You're in Jackson County. Jackson County is over 1,600 square miles and has less than 1,400 residents. Think about that. Think about how big that county is and how few residents there are. Walden is the only it's it's the only town with any uh, any facilities in the county. I believe it's the only town that's incorporated in the entire county. And it's got about a third of the population. So it still doesn't make it a real major metropolitan center, 450 people. So what was so good about Walden? Well, first of all, I stayed at uh, the uh, Granite Corner RV Park. And that's run by a fellow named Kent. Kent is uh, an employee of the county. Uh, I think he's the county manager, if I got it right. <laughs> and if I didn't, my apologies, Kent. But he's a real nice guy. And um, he took over a corner lot where he put in three really large RV sites, which you saw in the video. And he's right in town. I mean, literally, it's a two-minute walk over to Main Street or whatever they call it. And there are a few things on Main Street. <laughs> there are at least three different places, sit-down restaurants to sit and enjoy. I went to one of them, uh, the Moose Cafe. I thought it was very good. I went there once for lunch and once for uh, dinner. Uh, very, very good both times. Uh, met some of the locals, very interesting people, very nice people. Uh, there's a lot to do in the area. And what I see really unique about um, Granite Corner Campground is that it's centrally located. I mean, you've got all the facilities right there. You've got the town there. You've got the restaurants there. You've got the gas stations right there. You've got the supermarket a uh, mile down the road. But then just outside of town, uh, let me give you a few highlights. The main reason that I went there was uh, I was interested in scoping out a couple of ghost towns, uh, Teller City specifically. And I learned later that I actually do think I walked through Park City. Uh, Teller City and Park City today are deep in the forest. They were mining communities that, quote unquote, lived for about four years, from 1881 to 1885. And legend, in fact, from the historian, uh, more than has it that they just picked up and left, and they even left all their personal belongings there. Um, somebody told me that they knew that a stagecoach was coming, but I guess there was a rush to be on that stagecoach, or who knows what the reasoning was. 
but um, everybody picked up and left. Or maybe the rationale was it was less to carry and, you know, they would get set up somewhere else. Because apparently these people were used to traveling. They were there because the mine in the area had silver. And they thought that they were going to get rich mining silver. But the price of silver in 1885 crashed. And uh, getting the silver out of that area uh, because of its remote location, especially at that time, uh, was expensive and difficult. So uh, Teller City disappeared. Now, I went down there. I took a walk around. I've got some photos, and they're, they're in the portfolio below. You can take a look at them and enjoy that. Um, a lot of the buildings have been largely taken apart. And again, that was told to me that that happened probably from some of the ranchers in the area. Uh, because when the locals realized what had happened, well, they're not going to let anything go to waste. I remember this late 1880s, um, late 1800s, uh, you know, people didn't have a lot. And if there was good lumber or if there was dishes and things like that that they could grab and bring back to their homestead, they did. Um, so these buildings, when you see them in the photos, are not decayed because of time. They were just taken apart because people needed the materials. Uh, in addition to the uh, ghost towns, uh, and by the way, when I went down there, I drove over a pass called Calamity Pass, which runs you up over 9,700 feet. And uh, that was an interesting drive because it's a steep, narrow, winding, dirt rock road. Uh, don't do it unless you've got a good four-wheel drive. And hope and pray that nobody comes the other way along. I did it in the middle of the week, so there was a minimum of traffic out there. <clears throat> when I crossed over, it brought me over towards the town of Gould, which is nothing. It's a couple of buildings um, so it's not a real town town per se. Uh, again, uh, Walden is the only town in the county uh, of any substance. But it brought me over by State Forest State Park. Had an opportunity to check out the campgrounds there, the campsites. There's some nice ones. Uh, there's some nice campsites up at State Forest State Park. Uh, mostly no electric. So if you go in there, be understanding and be aware of what you're going to be doing. They only have one electric area. And they have no areas that have full hookups the way Granite Corner does. Um, <clears throat> great hiking, though, in that area. And again, the roads, there are only a couple of roads that run throughout the county. And they're very lightly traveled, needless to say, with virtually no one living in the county. Uh, I had time to get over to Delaney Lakes, which is also near Lake John. Uh, they're all, I'm told by Kent, excellent fishing areas. I did fish. I uh, cast my rod a whole bunch of times for like an hour and a half. Caught nothing. I've yet to catch a fish, but I've only gone fishing two or three times, so I'm still smiling. Um, there were some RVs camping on the water's edge at the Delaney Lakes. Uh, it apparently is allowed, uh, and apparently it's free, but again, no hookups. So you're completely dry camping it there. Um, the Moose Cafe I mentioned before. Oh, yeah, Arapahoe National Wildlife Refuge. That's also just a couple of miles south of town. And uh, it's a, there's a six-mile auto loop you can do, and it's a really interesting thing for seeing different wildlife habitats. It's a nationally recognized, uh, largely um, uh, avian species habitat, a lot of birds. But there's also moose and elk and other animals that will go through there. I didn't see any, but uh, I'm told from the placards I read, and I've got some photos for you, uh, that um, there's a lot of wildlife that goes through that area. And it's a protected area. It's an area where you and I can go in and we're the observers. So um, bottom line, Walden, Colorado, thumbs up. Uh, Kent with uh, Granite Corner RV Park, thumbs up. It's only three sites, but he's a good man. It's a good park. And if he's got space, I would stay there. Uh, it's at 8,100 feet. So, you know, the weather starting in October begins to get a little bitter, a little rough. Um, Kent is open to keeping his campground open, uh, maybe a little later in the season, but keeping the water off because he doesn't want to go through trying to keep it from freezing. Um, freezing temperatures are common from mid-September on at night. And, um, but I would think well into November, you could be there and you could be a camper, you could be a hiker, you could be a fisherman, uh, you could be an explorer the way I am and just go looking around for different places. There's a lot to do in that county, and I think Jackson County is really cool, really good people, and um, they probably even appreciate what I'm drinking here, this uh, Rusher beer tea, so two of my tea. Um, good people. Anyway, thank you, Alan Sills. You have a great day.